Sunday morning, Katrina had built into a dangerous Category 5 hurricane barreling towards New Orleans. On August 29th, Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast. The world watched as the levees surrounding New Orleans failed, flooding the city, leaving tens of thousands stranded and more than a thousand dead. There is absolutely nothing here. We advise people that this city has been destroyed. Criticism of state and federal officials for the levee failures and botched emergency response was all over the news. But another story was beginning. We will do what it takes. We will stay as long as it takes to help citizens rebuild their communities and their lives. I remember thinking we have the best opportunity to rebuild this city as one of the greatest cities in America. Katrina launched one of the largest housing rebuilding programs in U.S. history, and the outcome has loomed over every disaster since. This is our Katrina. But what have we learned? You can see widespread flooding, street after street underwater, and this is... 24 hours after the levees failed, Governor Kathleen Blanco flew over New Orleans. It was shocking to see the amount of damage. Houses were just jumbled. It, it was just a mess. More than 200,000 homes had been destroyed statewide. New Orleans was hit hardest. We had a housing disaster, a whole big old housing disaster that, that was untenable. We were operating in the dark. We didn't have anyone who had an instruction book to tell us how to do this. Nor did they have the funding. Blanco went to Washington, where Congress had allotted Louisiana far less per home than Mississippi, whose leadership had more political clout. It's time to play hardball, as I believe that's the only game that Washington understands. In the end, I think I was very effective. I made them do what I wanted them to do. Nearly a year after the storm, Blanco got the federal funds and finally launched her signature program, The Road Home. The name, I think, says it all. The idea is that The Road Home program wants to help people find the road home. To help residents rebuild their homes, the program promised grants of up to $150,000, minus any insurance or other federal reimbursements. And Blanco insisted on rigorous anti-fraud measures. We had been publicly accused of being corrupt and unable to be trusted with large sums of money. And when I heard that public accusation, I made a decision that this was going to be the most honest program that the federal government had ever witnessed. To take on the huge task of distributing all the grant money to homeowners, Blanco's administration hired ICF International, a private contractor based in Virginia. But soon, things began to go wrong. You call the road to recovery, they give you a number to call and call and call and call, nothing. When the Road Home program started, frankly, it was a huge mess. Walter Thomas says he found every document filed every form the road home asked for to help him rebuild. Six months later, he finally got a call back. News media just told of story after story of the road home program overall just not allowing recovery to happen. Applicants found themselves swimming in red tape. The anti-fraud measures required fingerprints and lots of documents, which seemed unfair to those who had lost everything. ICF had no experience managing a program the size of the road home. Many applicants reported having to wait months for their appointments because the company was understaffed, and errors ICF made in calculating grants caused even more delays. I never dreamed it would take as long as it did. Their name was synonymous with mismanagement, really cruel treatment of applicants, disdain, incompetence. ICF said it was doing everything it could, as it built a huge infrastructure from scratch. But critics also faulted Blanco's administration for not initially setting a timetable by which the company had to deliver a certain number of grants. Hurricane Katrina victims storming the Louisiana state capitol saying, show us the money. As frustration mounted, the Louisiana legislature voted to fire ICF. Blanco refused and later gave the company more money for an expanded contract. Yeah, I mean, it's like, 
Okay, so you want to start over. Who do you want to start over with? Any company at the outset would have had the same problems. More than 105,000 people have applied. Only 506 have received money. It also became clear the formula the state and ICF were using to calculate the awards was flawed, creating inequities that later led to a discrimination lawsuit. Homeowners in black neighborhoods, who suffered the same amount of damage as those in white neighborhoods, often got less grant money. The amount was determined, in many cases, by what a home was worth before Katrina, not what it cost to fix after. You end up having to decide which thing you're not going to do, right? So what is it? The, you don't do the roof? Or do you decide just to not have any electricity? Or, you know what, I just won't do walls. Then, in the spring of 2007, the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, which oversaw the road home, made a startling announcement. It now said the program didn't adhere to its rules and had to be redesigned. That brought everything to a halt. There's new political fallout from Hurricane Katrina to report tonight. Louisiana's governor, Kathleen Blanco. HUD's ruling was the last straw. Blanco's political career was over. I have decided that I will not seek re-election as your governor. You know, everything is politics in our world. And I did my level best, and it was not enough. By 2009, ICF says that despite 179 program changes made by the government, it more than fulfilled its contract, dispersing nearly $8 billion to 124,000 homeowners statewide. And while New Orleans had come a long way, when the new HUD secretary came to town, he couldn't believe what he saw. The memory of traveling down to New Orleans is one of the most searing memories I have as secretary. I was surprised to find uh, so many families still struggling to get back in their homes. Without road home? <laughs> I don't know where I would be without road home. I'm nowhere with road home. Eight years after the storm, Marguerite Worsley is still one of the struggling. She says she got her recovery money in drips and drabs, which never allowed her to fully rebuild. First insurance money, then a road home grant, and finally a payout resulting from the discrimination lawsuit. And over all that time, termite damage forced her to redo repair work she had already done. Every time I had money, I thought I was gonna go back into my house. But the money, it's like pouring water through a sifter. Frankly, our program wasn't flexible enough, and there were too many barriers or too much red tape to folks being able to really utilize it the way they should. When I walk around the city of New Orleans, when I drive around the city of New Orleans, that there are two different recoveries. One that's very, very successful, and one that, uh, that at this point at least is still a failure. It is chaos along the Jersey Shore. Conditions are deteriorating very rapidly. This city is basically underwater. After Hurricane Sandy hit, I understood the scale and the magnitude and what it would take because of what I had seen in Katrina. We have families that are going to be out for a long rebuilding process where homes have been completely destroyed. And our experience is that it will take years. As President Obama's point man for Sandy Recovery, Donovan says he's learned Katrina's lessons. He says he's introduced a grant formula that's more fair, an application process that's more streamlined, and incentives to better protect against future storms. But a year after Sandy, some of the complaints echo those heard in the wake of Katrina. They say there's all this money out there, but we didn't get any of it, and I don't know of anybody that did. The state is got us again, wrapped up in so much paperwork. It consumes your life. What I wanted to say to you, though, Secretary Donovan, is just convey the frustration so many homeowners are feeling. This process is never going to be simple in a way that would make it as fast as families would like. And for a family going through what they're going through after disaster, it never can be fast enough. States are still in charge of distributing federal grants to homeowners, and one of the companies New Jersey hired to help with its Sandy housing recovery programs is ICF. 
which after the road home, went on to build a business that brought in nearly a billion dollars in revenue last year. In a response to written questions, ICF defended its performance after Katrina and estimated that its Sandy contract will exceed $10 million for analytical and program support. For his part, Donovan says he'll hold states accountable for their rebuilding decisions. What we care about is, is the money being used effectively? Are we getting what we paid for? And ultimately, if communities don't do that, we will take money back. The story of Sandy's recovery is still unfolding. But this time, no one can say there wasn't a guide. There was Katrina. This story ends up being the roadmap, the instruction booklet, the how-to story of dealing with disaster. It also tells you what not to do in dealing with disaster. 